Dave, Sanjay Poonin. Ah, Sanjay. Hey, Sanjay. Nice to meet John you. John Furrier. John, nice to meet you too. Okay, so Sanjay, okay, uh, let's see. So are we live officially now? We are officially live. We've got a uh, number of folks watching us here. And, Excellent. Uh, we Pleasure had, to be here. We had 2,000 that we just reset. They've all been coming back. 2,000 viewers. Yes. Yeah. Outstanding. Yes. So Sanjay, you're the president of the Global Solutions and Go-To-Market yes. uh, strategies for yes. SAP. Yeah. What does that all entail? So I uh, manage the group called Solution Management in our specialist sales organization that basically takes what, uh, you know, what comes out of products, drives it into the field in the different segments of products that we'll talk about in a second, but also specifies what goes into our portfolio uh, in terms of investments into the product. So we're the effective glue between development and the sales uh, in each of our segments of products. Number one, technology, which is middleware and NetWeaver. Number two, business analytics, which is all of the business objects products. Number three, line of business applications, which is our business suite. And fourth, industry solutions. So uh, um, my team uh, you know, drives the revenue growth and customer adoption uh, in those segments. So we just had one of your customers on, CIO is Andreas Berg. Uh, he's a CIO of a company in Europe. They do uh, uh, cranes throughout Europe <clears throat> and Middle East. And he said, he made the statement, I don't need hardware, I don't want to buy hardware, I don't need middleware, but there's everything in the cloud, right? He wants to put everything in the cloud. How is that changing your whole go-to-market strategy? It's a great question. We announced this morning um, a great partnership with Amazon Web Services, the leader in infrastructure um, uh, applications, sorry, uh, infrastructure as a service, IAS. Andy Jassy, who runs AWS there, was a classmate of mine at Harvard Business School. I called him up uh, a month, a year ago, and I said, listen, we got to partner together. Why? Because a lot of your infrastructure uh, is the cheapest way in which you could um, use infrastructure as a service in the cloud. We were finding a, a lot of our customers wanted to move test and dev type of environments, maybe in some of the production environments. Our own pre-sales guys were starting to do demos uh, with the demos running in the Amazon Web Services. Uh, the advantage is you can take your cost of infrastructure down significantly. If you think about your test and demo, even something like demos, you run a demo for an hour, okay, and then you turn it off. You shouldn't be paying for that compute resource after you're done. So utility computing at its best is being able to do that. So our CIOs now have a way by which a lot of their SAP infrastructure can move into cloud like Amazon. It's not exclusive. We're going to do the same thing in private cloud situations. We announced with Dell, Verizon, HP. You're going to see many of them sort of come out. And then we will have our own cloud solutions. By Design's one of them for the mid-market and also for some subsidiaries of big companies. And we'll have a family of applications like sales on demand, travel man and expense, talent management, sourcing. The HANA Cloud? Yeah, and the yeah. HANA Cloud. So there's going to be a family of places where people will deploy on premise, private clouds, or public clouds. I'm here with uh, Sanjay Poonin. and I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv, located in Palo Alto, California, the heart of Silicon Valley, and I'm here with... I'm Dave Vellante, <clears throat> Wikibon.org, the uh, open source, source research and advisory peer community. This is Silicon Angle TV, the leading tech coverage and events, live events. This is theCUBE, our flagship product, where we go to the events. We're day three here in Orlando, Florida for SAP Sapphire. We go in-depth coverage, and Sanjay runs the go-to-market SAP solutions uh, globally. Yes, That's the global, the global yes, title. Yes. Went to Harvard Business School, we just found out. Uh, great to have you on theCUBE. Doing um, deals with other yeah, buddies yeah, from Harvard yeah, Business yeah, School. Yeah, That's yeah, the way it goes it, it does. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got to go to a good <laughs> network to, <laughs> great to alumni, help make a few connections. Great alumni but, network, you, you know. Great deal, but so let's get into the, the nuts and bolts, yes. the cloud. We just talked with um, your colleague and said, hey, it's a lock-in on the HANA cloud, because you know what? This is what our groundbreaking move, it's the first step, but we're not necessarily going to make it lock-in. Your in. colleague actually didn't say that, we said that, and he sort of you know, gave us the party line on No, it. we asked him specifically, is it a lock-in? And he said, yes, this is our first go-to-market, this is the week groundbreaking, we're going to do it this way, but this is, again, we're going to expand on that. So, so what is the strategy for the cloud? Is it going to be a lock-in, SAP only? No. Um, how is it going to be federated, I think, if any? Yeah, as I, as I mentioned, right, no customer wants lock-in of any kind. Openness and choice is good. Now, certainly as you do more things within a stack, you get integration and certainly that's a benefit. So if HANA can work better with SAP, people may buy HANA and SAP together. That's okay. But the, the idea of cloud computing for our standpoint is let's start with the on-premise scenario where customers are using our business suite or business analytics on premise. They may decide, okay, I'm going to move all of these parts into a private cloud or the Amazon cloud. That's not our cloud, it's another vendor's, but it saves our company cost. 
We work with those cloud vendors to certify our products in that cloud environment. And we are, what we're doing is then able to lower their cost of infrastructure down. They may instead decide, I want to run all of my processes now in your cloud for an application you serve up by design, yeah. or sales on demand, or the HANA cloud, right? In offering people options where it's an SAP cloud, a third party cloud, or doing it on premise, customers now make their perspective of where they want to deploy. We have close to 2,000 people watching right now and uh, we're at SAP Sapphire. So share with the folks out there, from your perspective, the most exciting thing happening right now here at SAP Sapphire. I, I think that the biggest thing that's happened over the last 12 months and leading up to this Sapphire, there's an energy around this company that certainly in my five and a half years and for many of my colleagues have been here 15 years, haven't seen in the last five, 10 years. Um, I think there's charisma in the leadership at the top of the company, but there's also, I think, a, um, a kind of a crescendo of innovation uh, around these three vectors we've talked about, in memory, mobility, and cloud computing, that are topical and relevant to a lot of CIOs today. Uh, CIO Magazine did a recent sort of conference, and the three themes coming out of that conference happen to be these same three themes, so it's not just coincidence. Yeah, and those are our themes about. of siliconangle.com, very relevant. Very, very relevant. So when you, when you have something to talk about that's relevant, right, and you also have product in that area that's differentiated, it's a great story. And adds customers. value. Exactly, <laughs> In right? demand. And ultimately, the third part was adds business value, right? We tend to take at SAP yeah. not a technology and middleware or a, you know infrastructure approach to a problem. We tend to take a business value application industry approach. That's yeah. our roots. We're an yeah. applications company. Yeah. And you push into so, the infrastructure. Exactly. And the infrastructure and technology helps us do that. Yeah, yeah. So we're always looking for ways by which, when we're looking at great technology like HANA, how does it add value in a particular industry? Banking, retail, utilities. If you heard the Centrica story today in the keynote about the way in which they're going to do smart metering and intelligently meter in the, the ways in which they can serve customers uh, and, and monitor and help them manage their energy. It's a huge story. Yeah, and Shnabe, to a and Shnabe was here in the Cube on the first day talking about the innovation cycle that's emerging. And, and I think, uh, first of all, I totally agree, and I think it's really exciting. I think I would add to that is that from our perspective, we're seeing on the editorial side is that we were coming out of the, the worst great re recession ever in IT, and that was probably a 10 year recession, most highlighted by the 2008 <laughs> trough. We're on an upswing. There's the, there's buy, IT is changing, there's investment, very, very rapid investments. So that's, kind of timed into it perfectly, right? So, exciting products, growing market, teams pumped. I mean, that's like the, Absolutely. I mean, it sounds like Absolutely. a venture capitalist investment right there. Listen, you know? I mean, you obviously don't want to, you know, froth up this to the point where it's unreal. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I although I tend to be an optimistic person, yeah. I think Bill and Jim tend to be that way too. Uh, and we have to fire up our troops, whether so the employees, and you know, at the end of the day, our employees and our customers are our two assets. The reality is, yes, customers are now thinking growth rather than cost cutting. 2008, end of 2008, 2009 was a contraction, and we're starting to see a modest increase in people's willingness to spend. Yeah. Yeah. Even some of the emerging markets like Brazil, China, GDP growth is pretty positive. And I think in those BRIC countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, there's growth in even the mature countries, uh, even despite we've got unemployment and, and deep economic issues here in the U.S., there is willingness by CIOs to spend. Uh, and we think that will hopefully take care of some of the economic challenges we have, even in some of the mature how's markets. The, how's the pressure on you with um, the development cycle? Schnabe's point, obviously, other point was 12 months to six month life cycles of software, and it, a lot of iterations on the code. You go to market. That's yeah. you have again. Yeah. The frothing messaging is great. We can all yeah. high five each other. But the bottom line is you got to deliver. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So the yeah. delivery is the proof point. Yeah, absolutely. So now you got that pressure, the market's growing, so you yeah. demand's good, but now you also got the life cycles yeah. of the products. Yeah. How are you balancing that and what's your strategy? The proof is in the pudding, right? Which is, okay, we talked about HANA at Sapphire last year. It was March, April, May. It was an early formulation. We delivered end of November, November 30th. We delivered 1.0. Mm -hmm. You're going to see iterations of HANA, service packs, and another major release end of this year. That, I mean, that type of pace, three, six, nine, 12 months, is, you know, yeah. unheralded. Cloud as, we, as we say, tech athletes, I mean, you guys are really, in our book, you know, if we're going to be covering you guys like a sports team, we'd say, hey, you guys got some good athletes on the, on the team right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I, that's really what we want to do. We want to have great athletes developing code. We want to have great yeah. athletes selling code and everywhere in between. Marketing yeah. service. Young support, and all. Right? I mean, young developers yeah, are a big absolutely. part of the equation, right? Absolutely. I mean, we were hearing that earlier. No, let's be clear. I mean, you have to balance some of the great young talent with experience and domain. So we do both of those. Yeah. There is no age dispar <laughs> disparagement here. Uh, but I would also say in some of the new types of applications, like cloud computing and mobility. 
People expect to be able to download an, an iPhone app that's evolved over a day and week. You get an update in a matter of days and weeks. You don't have a tolerance of weeks and months. Now, for some of the apps that the customers don't have a tolerance um, on a cycle time to upgrade, ERP may get upgraded every three to five years. That's okay. So let's have different cycles for some of our products. ERP may get upgraded every 12, 18, 24 months. Business analytics and some yeah, of our yeah. BI systems, maybe every three, six, I mean, nine you months. Guys are in the, you guys yeah. are in the consumer business. We heard in the keynote, the, the customers at the center of the value props and the attention, as Schnabe was saying, but you're talking about in-memory, we call it fast data, that's what we're calling it. Um, you're talking about mobility. You're in the user experience business. I, think, I mean, how does that change the culture, and, or has it not changed the culture? I mean, I think we started getting significantly into the user experience as we moved out of the OLTP transactional world into the analytical world and then to the mobile world. Let's talk about analytics. It's a whole new set of users. It's managerial workers. They don't have time for a bad user and experience. If they don't, they'll go and use another tool, they'll buy another tool, and that's part of the reason or we bought business objects. Or they won't do their job objects. and business yeah. will fail. And that's the reason we bought business objects, was we brought not just better user experience, but we also brought a DNA that needed to change the company. It's helped us. Mobility, same thing. We had to bring and turbocharge a new type of DNA. Sybase brought that. We're seeing a huge amount of interest. You're going to see whole sets of interfaces today. I asked my team today, um, to do their entire presentations on a whiteboard, no PowerPoint, and an iPad demo. Think so, about that. OLTP, Revolutionizing. OLTP analytics, what was the third one? Mobility. To, mobility, right? there it is. Transaction processing is all about the system of record. Analytics is all about the system of engagement. And mobility is all about system of people, right? So if we can get all three of those moving at different paces, the second and third ones have user experiences that need to delight the user. Uh, and we think that that's a huge opportunity to change the DNA of the way we're doing things. Sanjay, a big part of your go-to-market is with service providers. Yeah. Right? And um, you, you see a lot of action out here in the show floor at the service providers booth. Yeah. You're talking about a lot of changes. Yeah. How are the service providers responding to that? What are you doing differently to bring them along? John and I have been talking about the services angle all week here. Yeah. And it's, a, it's a really key part of the ecosystem. Can you talk about that a little bit? I think if you look at the history of SAP, we made companies like PwC originally, now part of IBM, uh, Anderson, now Accenture. I mean, large part of their businesses were made on the back of business process reengineering. Remember that in the 80s and 90s, yeah, yes. Michael Hammer and all yeah. that stuff? Oh, yeah. And that's great, and that's part of the reason many of these guys built the big first wave of their business. And that's good. ERP has given them some growth. And quite frankly, today, good part of IBM's business, global services, Accenture, Deloitte, is all driven off that. And that's going to continue because much of the emerging markets are still doing that. Mm. But as you think about the next wave, they're excited about saying, listen, where are some of those opportunities to innovate new? Analytics, great. We think the analytics market is going to be just as big as, as ERP. And many of these folks are right there with us to innovate. It could include HANA, it could include, and for some of these service in, uh, integrators, like an HP and IBM, a Dell, they actually are a hardware partner too because they're building HANA, so they get a double-edged sword to be able to go after this market. And don't forget about the boutiques. So while we think about the big guys, what I love about the service integrator market is these boutiques in the particular regions are often awesome. Why? Because yeah, yeah. they're the best experts. This little 15, 20 person shop, yeah, yeah. they're winning deals often against the big guys because they've got the best 15, 20 people. And that's yeah. entrepreneurship and capitalism yeah. at its best, right? Yeah. Yeah. We want to foster that. You guys we want been... the big and the small guys to be successful. You guys you guys are known in the ecosystem, obviously, over the years, through the experience with, with SAP as money makers. People make money working yeah. with SAP, both yeah. uh, in the it's great the, for the ecosystem. the ecosystem. And the, your, your customers do well, and they, yeah. their businesses grow because of it. Um, but with this new model with cloud, yeah. can you comment, and the number one question we get from folks is, what's, what's, the, new, what's the new value chain? Yeah. Where's the white space that I need to adjust to? Yeah. Where's the money to be made? So, question is, in the services delivery, both on the consultant side and on the services you can expose to, customers can expose to their customers, what's new, what's changing? Because uh, that's where the consultancies, yeah. that's where the guys are like, yeah. okay, I don't mind reconfiguring the yeah. value chain yeah. because we're going to make money. But So can you share what are the new things that people focus in on? Yeah, I think, you know, in just the same way that if you talked about system integration work and mainframe and COBOL work, it changed to client server. People weren't doing assembly language programming they were doing in C, then in 3G or 4GL. System integration and integration consulting work is always going to evolve into a higher levels of, of abstraction. In cloud computing, and so on. You're not probably going to do as much of the integration of systems into the back end because people have that inside their data centers. You're going to probably have to use a cloud set of services to build differentiated applications and logic on top of that. Okay? So the either existing system integrators or a new breed of consulting firms are emerging that are doing this faster and better. And if you think about the early days of the dot-com, 
that's what happened there too, right? Yeah. Now, some of them died, some of them continue to exist. But people were starting to say, hey, I've got an expertise now in doing the web. Okay? I think in the same way, you're going to develop either existing firms or new firms that have an expertise in building cloud computing-based applications. Because those are built, just happens to be in a different infrastructure, but those apps need to be built, extended. In the mobile world, we think it's a whole new opportunity for people to say, listen, SAP's got a great platform in the Unwired platform. They've developed about 20% of the apps that we think an enterprise would need, but the remaining 80% on an, an app store, if you would, are going to be built by our partners, and we love that. Yeah. ISVs and system integrators. Don't forget about the ISVs and OEMs, because they're a very important channel to our success, too. Yeah, we're seeing a rise also. I mean, we've, we've come at the Strata Conference, we've had the Cube there. You know, data is the heartbeat of cloud, right? Because data drives mobility, cloud drives mobility. So, you almost got the three-legged stool, data, cloud, mobile. Now, do you agree with that, or do you see that dynamics changing? I mean, obviously, data science is now a big higher end uh, consultancy, maybe uh, I mean, smaller, maybe not as broad yeah. as like the, the program. I mean, when you talked about the three vectors, you called it data, cloud, mobile. I mean, if I were to put in front of the data, big data, you've got in memory. I mean, so yeah. you're talking right through that, our playbook. In some senses, that's the reason. We found that the data explosion needed to be done in a more modern fashion. In memory for us is differentiated. None of the traditional database vendors have a story in that direction. Mobility is extremely rejuvenating to both the analytics and our transactions business. Uh, and cloud computing yeah. for us <laughs> is the way in which we defend the future. I mean, as so you overlay our editorial for the past two years, we are SAP's editorial. I mean, we completely overlay on you. That's We've awesome. We've been doing this for two years, and you know, and we were the first blog at SiliconAngle.com to have the slogan where computer science yeah. intersects social science. Yeah, it's true. Um, hence, adopted by Apple, technology, yes. liberal arts. Yeah. Uh, EMC, I, I will uh, tell you that your, your point there is completely clear because even, you know, I'm a, a product and a technology guy at heart. I, my first job was at Microsoft, my second job was at Apple. I love technology, I'm a computer scientist by nature. 90% of what I do today, gentlemen, do you know what it is? It's being a sociologist to manage people. Mm -hmm. It's yes. not the code, yeah. okay? Yeah. And this whole social aspect of how you motivate, drive people, collaborate with them, is so much more important than actually just the bits and bytes. The bits yeah, and, bytes and, are important. and George, George Matthew actually commented on when we asked, we grilled him about on the BI side, which is you know we were kind of digging the data warehouse. Yeah. He he commented, he aligned because we were talking about social, you know, social crowdsourcing elements. It's essentially network computing. Yes. Philosophies and done in a, a, kind of a, leverage. Yeah. Metcalf, Metcalf's law. Um, he, he said he said social social BI business intelligence will be at the heart of the analytics. I plan. think it's absolutely right, because you think about, let's talk about retailers who want to understand you know, some of our large brands. They've got a fashion show, models walking off the runway, and immediately you've got a whole bunch of people on Facebook and Twitter tweeting, I love that dress, okay? Yeah, great think data. Think about being able to get that sentiment analysis, immediately tell your manufacturers, hey, how quickly can you get this into the store? That's an unstart, you would, if you were saying, hey, how much did I sell last week? That's old data. You want to be tracking this at the point it comes off, delivering it as quickly as you can to that customer, and <laughs> then you get ahead. Okay, okay, we're getting the hook from your handles. I know you want to stay. You, li you like the cube? This, this is, is great, man. Is I think you guys are doing a fantastic job. Okay. Because I, my personal perspective is this type of conversation is the future of radio, of talk, of everything, right? This is like ESPN, 1979. Yeah. I think we it's cover a, tech like sports. So. I followed your guys from a little bit of a distance. It's a pleasure. I think it's my first time on your show. Yeah, thank it's you. It's a pleasure well, we to be there. Back, Sanjay. I'd Sanjay be delighted Gordon. anytime. You're a tech anytime. athlete. We know you're working hard. You guys are doing great. Yeah, Again, great. love the editorial. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Thanks for the general uh, for the uh, for the encouragement. Yeah. Uh, and most of all, you know, thank you for being here at our show. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Thank you. Great conversation. Take care.